All right, no crew today. I'm completely by myself. I'm about to go face the hardest aircraft I think I'm ever gonna face. I'm always nervous about a checkout on any new type, but I've never been more apprehensive than I am about this airplane. Yeah, if I can get out of my head about this thing, it really does feel like a pretty awesome airplane. Like, a lot of visibility. Oh yeah. Very smooth. It's awesome in the air. This is my preparation to solo the Harvard. Also known as the pilot maker, the T6 Texan. Got him. If you thought that was the sound of the Pratt & Whitney Wasp 1340 starting up, you're in for a surprise. I'm gonna skip adding music for the bulk of this episode so we can hear the sound of this engine sing. That, and the sweet sound of Dave's voice yelling at me. But in all seriousness, he didn't have to bust my chops too much on this one because I showed up prepared, with respect, and a healthy dose of fear. The Flight Chops project has created some amazing opportunities, and I documented and shared my table conversion training in great detail from the start, culminating in getting checked out in this beast. Look at the size of that engine. I'm flying second today, and I actually didn't mind having a little extra time to collect my thoughts before facing this thing. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer to hear that engine start up, but I promise it's worth it. Hey man, how you doing buddy? <laughs> That's a killed deer pretending to be injured to lure me away from the nest. See if I can find the nest. Oh, there it is. Right there. Those are killed deer eggs, it's so weird. Yeah, yeah, I know you're mad. Okay, I'll get out of here. Pretend to be injured. I'll follow you. So I've never been more nervous uh, leading up to one of these things. This is the Harvard, this is the T6, this is the pilot maker. Whatever you want to call it, this airplane is arguably one of the hardest airplanes to fly. And there goes Aaron. So Aaron's out there doing his recurrency for the season and getting Dave warmed up in the back seat to fly with me. It's a tough airplane to fly from any seat, but I don't envy Dave having to be in the back on this one. To add some context, this is the Canadian Historical Aircraft Association, of which I am a proud member. Dave is signed off as a Harvard check pilot by Ron, the chief pilot. He's flown everything from F-86 Sabre jets to going Mach 2 in the F-104. He was a military instructor in the Harvard. He's got a book about it. And this flight where he did spins and aerobatics on his 85th birthday is actually available to Patreon supporters on my channel. 85. <laughs> hey, that was a hoot. So knowing Ron signed him off for the back seat. <laughs> yeah. I've got full confidence in Dave, but I also don't want to test him. I'm going to work hard to make sure he doesn't have to save me from back there, but I don't want to be in that position. It's not an easy airplane to fly from any seat, especially not the back seat. And of course, it had to be a freaking windy day, right? It's like 12 gusts and 20, I think. I can't do one of these things without a freaking gusty crosswind. I'm pretty sure I got all the procedures down, so I'm not so worried about that in the air. Just getting the landing roll out right. That is one pissed off killdeer. The killdeer nest is right about there. There it goes. This is a dream. This is working toward flying Spitfire. I didn't bring a crew for this shoot. I just really want to focus on being a pilot, so this is it. This is me talking to myself, really. I mean, I didn't even shave, <laughs> so I don't care how I look on this one. I'm really here as a pilot, not a filmmaker, so I'll be rolling cameras, set it and forget it, and uh, share what I can. For the future training in this airplane, JP's coming out to do some work with the chipmunk and some formation training, so he'll get some additional B-roll with me as I fly this thing more, but for this first flight, no crew. I'm just here to get it done. So? Aaron did really well. Oh no. I had one really nice backseat landing, one, eh, and then the last one was like hilariously bad. Okay, first Harvard flight. Kind of a big deal for you. It's a challenging day. It's crosswind from the right. It was pretty ripping earlier, but we're, we're within limits now. Since it's your first flight, we're gonna start with counting work. So we'll get in the airplane, do your startup, follow the checklist, it's really methodical, don't feel like you're rushed at all. We can be in there all day. Last season, while producing another thing, we did have a crew out to shoot a very detailed cockpit briefing in this airplane. I'll be using bits of that in this episode as needed. But for this one, short of rolling GoPros and setting them and forgetting them, I was 100% present as a pilot. All right, is this one rolling? Yeah. All right, no more thinking about that. Here we go. Can you just turn up the intercom just slightly? Check one, two, check, 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 check. check. All right, fuel is on left. 
The camera on my head can't actually see them, but the fuel gauges are on the floor in this airplane, which we talk about in the detailed cockpit briefing. And the mixture is backwards. Mixture is rich, here it comes back. Dave offered some insights on that. Maybe the logic has something to do with the fact that when you go, you know, to your mixture you're, and then you're slowing down, it hooks it in and it, you can't mess it up. Good. Throttle's cracked. The carpet is cold. Take the throttle back about uh, a quarter inch. Okay. Otherwise, so here's the uh, scenario on startup. If it backfires, you have too much throttle. If it sits there loping for a long period of time, you don't have enough. All right, so the prime. I need to wobble, pump some pressure. So you got the primer out, and now wobble it full. It'll take about five strokes. Slow down with the wobble pump. So there's no advantage to going really fast with the wobble pump. Okay. That's perfectly fine right there. So now give it a shot? Yeah, give it a shot. Does it feel full? Yep. So you want it just about that much six times. The manual wobble pump can also be used to maintain fuel pressure if you have a pump failure. And I just, well, I can leave the wobble pump wherever. Yep, just all the way forward as a general. primer. Bags are going on both. All right, so we already have the master and battery on. All clear? Yeah. Energize. Pull the stick back and hold it back at this point. You got your feet on the brakes? Yep. So we'll spool up until you don't hear a pitch change. Roughly 10 to 12 seconds. Contact! Very nice. Uh, a little bit less power. No, you're okay. Throw the uh, prop full flying. And we'll bring the power up a little. Just a touch, just so nice and slow. Where do you want it? It's over two, it's 22 inches now. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about that. It's going to come down. Go ahead, 1,000 RPM. Uh, 800. On departure, turn good. out. How's that feel? Pretty awesome. All right, so control check. And flaps are coming up, you're guarding the gear. Yeah. Um, so the, the gear control is here, uh -huh. you, this is down in detent. You never touch that on the ground, you just make sure, sure it's all the way down in the detent because there's no squat switch or any safety. Wow. The flap handle in this thing is huge and robust, just like the gear handle. And we watch these fingers when the gear and flaps are going up and down. So not transiting as quickly as I expected, but that's actually... Oh, you're at idle. That's why the pressure's low, okay. All right, and they're up, and now I'm going to lock it. Lock it, yep. Before we call ground, we'll just get you kind of straight. The taxiing is going to be heavy, so you're going to feel it's a lot of leg effort to get it to do things. And you'll probably notice taxiing it. You can see how someone would end up exacerbating the, the like, that seems like the most common error is on, on takeoff and landing is just like over controlling it because it's so heavy that it's already going the other way before you've managed to get back in front of it. So it's like, oh, this is all you, if you start feeling this on the rolls, that's all you. You're doing that. It's not the airplane doing that. All right, flip through the list here, run up, that makes it rich. The pressures are where we need them. The oil shutter should be uh, against the firewall, should be affirmative. Which is fine, because we have lots of temperature. Okay. Um, now, I, I miss switching tank, because I haven't seen switch tank. You could do that now. Because I want to do it on the run up. Okay, 1500 RPM. Yep. Got her okay. stable at 1500. Yep. Cycle the prop three times. So you bring it all the way to course, and you watch for 400 RPM. When you get to 400 RPM drop, bring it all the way back full fine. Let it fully recover. And here we go you one just, more time. You can just watch the behavior on the, on the uh, tri gauge for the oil pressure. Yeah. You'll see what that does. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, that's three cycles. We're back to full. Fine. Ah, can't read the carpet, so I need to do my belt thing. A lot of the controls in this airplane are not intuitive, such as unlocking the shoulder belt. All right, and pre lock my belt. And the carb heat location. I spent a long time hangar flying to get ready for this flight. Extra check. All right, manifold pressure 28, so I'm really going to hold the brakes Yeah, down. really stand on them. I got my feet on the pedals just in case. Yeah, you got to use your big boy legs. I'm using them, I just don't want to go over the power. So there it is. Bag check. Back to both. Perfect. That's all you got to do with this uh, RPM. Okay. Gently coming back to idle. Nice. And you just bring her back to... Yep. Uh, slow enough backfire. So you can feel how tight that throttle is, right? Like it ain't gonna back off on you. Yeah, that's tight. Okay, run-up is complete. 
Takeoff will line up. You'll slowly advance the power. Obviously, there's a limit, so we don't want to go above 36. That's engine teardown territory. 32 is what we're going to use. You're going to set the power slowly. Okay, there we go. There's a couple things you're going to notice on the roll. One thing that people tend to do is they'll start advancing the throttle, and then as it gets noisy and things start happening, they'll get to like 20 inches, and then they're like, uh, what? So just slow and steady up to 32. You're there. Then you're done with the throttle. It's just literally just don't look down, just quick passing glance at the tri gauge. Oil pressure in the green, fuel pressure is up. That's it. Gauges are green. You're going to notice it's going to take a while. The tail doesn't come up right away like the chippy. Don't rush it. It's going to come up. And then you'll start to feel it um, kind of basketball on the wheels. Yeah, you don't really need to look at the airspeed at this point. Right there. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, I see a little bit not enough forward, but that's okay. Stop the brakes. Yeah. Pull it hard. Never mind, 95. Yeah, 95. Power back 28. 26 and then pull the prop back. 400 feet's kind of the rule for bringing it back to climb power, 28 and 2000. As a courtesy, generally, I bring it back at the end of the runway or 200 feet just because the thing is so loud and we have a lot of residential around here. Oh yeah, perfect, we're right to 28. 26 and full fine, back to 2000, we'll give you 28 and 2000. We'll use that in 95 knots all the way up to 2500 feet in the control zone. We're gonna go southeast towards Essex. Okay, power set, left turn out when we're uh, 500 feet, there it is. You don't need that 32, you can use it as long as you want, but it's easier on the engine and easier on everybody's ears if you pull it back sooner rather than later. Wow, that's freaking awesome, dude. You like it? Love it. Just getting used to where to put my, like everything is higher than what I'm used to, so like resting my hand on my leg doesn't really work to hold the spade, so I'm just holding a bit lower. Forgot you got trims. You want to bring your rudder trim neutral here, we're like really... I'll tell you, the cheat is get the notch vertical and that'll be about right. Otherwise, you're just making it way harder on yourself. Yeah. Did I at least climb it out straight? I felt like I had it coordinated in the climb. The funny part is you don't have to do anything. Yeah, the that's trip, what I the mean. Trim is set, you don't even need to put your feet on the pedals at 95, 28. And that's why with the trim at 3, that's what it's doing for you? Yeah, that's what it's doing for you. Got it. Okay, so, I mean, I don't know, should we have done a cruise check or anything? Kind of look at my instruments, I like it. Power set for cruise, I guess it'd be a little more manifold pressure. Maybe put us on the left tank. There you go. Now we're clear of the zone now. Hey, Windsor Tower, it's Victor India Juliet clearing over Essex to the southeast at 2500. Victor India Juliet Tower cleared on route. Victor India Juliet. All right, let's throttle her up to 28 and 2000. We'll go back into a climb. We'll head out at 2,500 feet until we clear the zone, then we'll climb it to 4,500 feet for upper air work. It's got a lot of power, so I can tell you're kind of like, wow, you know, that's a nose high attitude for 95, but it, it does have a lot of power. Now with your rudder trim where it is now, look at your ball. Yeah, so I need to work a little bit more because I, have, I added power, yeah. Yeah, because the three o'clock rudder trim is for any climb. climb. Oh, for any climb? Well, standard climb. So do you, do you actually use it every time or just on takeoff? I don't use it every time, no. I use it on takeoff. Throttle it back to 25 and, and 1800. We'll use that for steep turns. You can lean it to the throttle stop. So we're at 4750. Fly it around. All right, so we'll do a steep turn to the left. We'll do a hazel check. So height's good, area's good, security's good. Engine. High secure. You like it? And look at it, I'll just do a quick last turn. We want to focus a lot on upper air work. So first thing we're going to do is just fly around. Steep turns, um, get a feel for what kind of rudder input is required to coordinate the airplane. I think it's just us up here on this lovely day. It is, yeah, just take it all in, kind of get a feel for it. Yeah. All right, so we'll set up this heading, and we'll do a 360 to the left, steep, here we go. Yeah, take us, uh, maybe do a 180, because we're getting kind of far away. Okay. Steep turns are one of those exercises where I feel like you can always apply the same fundamentals whatever you're flying. Oh, that's looking nice. Just aim small. And debriefing with Cloud Ahoy confirmed I was doing a pretty good job holding altitude. Now do a reversal. Now we were basing this track on Dave's watch, so I think the GPS info wasn't perfect. It was also fun that Dave's watch tracks his heart rate. And reverse it again for me. That's looking pretty good though. And in part two, we'll look at how his pulse directly related to my approaches and landings. I'd also like to shout out to Chuck at Cloud Ahoy for helping import the data from Dave's watch. Very nice. Pretty good altitude control. How do you feel that you were coordinated or? Yep. 
Rolls on a heading are also a great exercise when you get into a new plane. So these so things, that way you know, yes, right. So you kind of know what the uh, rudder input feels like to keep the yeah. nose straight. Try it. That's probably about enough of that. Yep, that's my second got it. Making you sick? A little. Are you ready to try a power off stall? Yeah, let's do it. Once you're fairly comfortable with what's going on. We'll start with some clean stalls, power off. It's going to drop a wing, but it's not going to be crazy. And standard recovery, but just don't, you know, hammer the throttle. I don't need you to just goose it. It's hard on the engine. So wing drop. Okay, I think it's going to stall. It's stalled. Recover. Okay, so we're going to bring the prop up to 2000. We'll keep the throttle where it is for now. Bring your mixture full rich. And we'll throttle back, and you'll just hold this like any other stall. Just keep the attitude. and It's going to be backfiring when you get to idle. Just ignore it. Okay, so on the recovery, I'm not going to slam the throttle. Please don't. You can listen to that or you can hit the cutout. Loud enough to notice it. Not going to miss that, no. That's the perfect attitude, just hold that. Get mushy. It's pretty predictable. Pretty good. Pretty damn good. Okay, just uh, level off of 45 and uh, that's enough power. You can probably just use 20 for now. Go ahead and lower the gear. That feels awesome. That lever is so freaking big. Okay, so fingers are coming down. Okay, I see that pin. I see that pin. This is a really important visual cue, right? From the cockpit. If that is not showing when your gear is down, it is not down and locked. Do you agree or you can't see him from back there? I can't see him, but I have green lights. You got green lights? I got green lights, fingers. fingers, and pins. Those are the three things to check. Okay, so we'll, why don't we slow down a little, bring it both to about 100, and we'll start feeding it some flap to get an idea what that feels like. Bring it yeah. down to 20 degrees or so. I'd kind of like you to throttle it up and maybe fly it around level at 70 or so, which is a uh, 10 below the triangle. All right, so maintain altitude, fly it at 70, just so I feel slow flight and landing configuration. This is not slow flight, but it's it's slower flight. So 15 inches, manifold good enough, 220. Whatever you need, you know? Just to hold it, yeah, okay. It needs a little more. Yeah, you need a fair amount of power once you got the gear and the flaps out to go this slow. I'll just get her turned around, just feel that. Yeah, sure. Try slowing her down to 65, put a little more flap in. 30? Yeah, there you go. I mean, it's still got some authority. You do, yeah. That's looking nice. But, uh, go ahead and put full flap in and just leave it down. Leave the switch down? Yep. So it doesn't like keep on working and fighting? No, don't worry about that. Now keep about 60 knots on. Yep. Now, now you're pretty much in slow flight. How's it feel? I mean, it's it's not bad. It's stable. I feel like I have authority, but I'm also very cognizant that I would. You're not. cognizant that you are way too slow. Yes. You're uncoordinated, and I can feel the airplane. Oh yeah, it does take a lot more rudder, doesn't it? Yeah. There we go. You can feel it washing a little bit in the prop wash when it's not coordinated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to put you on the right tank, just level off here, what we're going to do, pick up a little bit, pick up about 10 knots and then we'll throttle back to idle and you'll stall it in this configuration. If I was coming back, prop stays where it is, you want to pull yeah, no, it's fine. All the way to idle now, just go ahead and talk me through this stall. Well, I'm just going to hold the speed until it, I can't talk when I'm trying to do this, but you know what I need to do. Not too quick? Way too quick, dude. Sorry, man. Now, I knew better than to firewall this giant supercharged radial, but even adding power too quickly in the bottom end will cause it to backfire like that, so there's no quick throttle movements in this thing. The stalls that'll be more interesting is going to be the power on departure simulation stalls, where we're not crazy power on, but we'll have, you know, 20 inches on, and you, you're going to feel that engine really snaps the airplane when it stalls under power. So what we're going to simulate now is if you were doing a flaps 20 short field takeoff and maybe you got slow on the departure. We'll bring the power, I'll, I'll just bring the power back to about here. Now start pitching up and maybe departure turning to the left. Alright, just let it, let it get too slow and then recover? Even on the edge of the stall would be fine. Okay. 
There you go, nice pickup. Wow, yeah, dude. Yeah, it went negative. Well, you know, yeah. Uh, too much. It uh, startled you, didn't it? Uh, no, I just didn't want to let that wing drop any more than it did. But the, the, the feet were good. Yeah, no, I went too, too much towards it. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that it was too much, it was too long, like the duration that we were in there. I'm happy with that, though. Okay. Yeah, Why don't we clean up the airplane all the way here? The gear is up, left coming up. What, you want to do a forced? I have the power and prop, okay? Forced approach will we'll keep a little bit of power on, because it's it's going to shock cool it today if we don't do that. So I've lost my engine. Hit the cut out of that. We're going to go to 95, which is best glide. And uh, I guess that brown field that's about to be the right beside a green one is good, nice and long. This is more airplane management, so... Uh, yeah, okay, so now we're doing a cause check. So it's from left to right. Fuel, mixture mags, master. Doesn't work, keep it at 95. Right. The forced approach in this airplane is fairly steep. Its uh, descent rate is pretty high, so... You just manage it like anything else. It's probably, you can expect at least a thousand feet a minute once the power pulled back. We're gonna leave the gear up. And I'm not gonna do anything with flaps until I am happy with my field. And right now, I feel like I don't need that. And in the simulation, if your engine had completely seized, how would you get the flaps down? I would have to pump it. Okay, I'm just making sure you remember. Yep. I'm gonna clear it. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be annoying. I'll get it each time, it's fine, can reach it. Okay, so do you see the field that I'm looking at? It's off, Which, the, it's off the wing. Yeah, the, the brown one between the two green ones? Affirmative. Okay. And you don't slip this thing, right? No, you don't yeah. need to. Yeah. There's a there's a critical mistake you're making right now. The uh, windmills? Yeah. I see them, I've been no, wearing No, 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 where are they pointing? Oh, uh, I'm like downwind. Yeah. That's pretty critical. We're going to overshoot. I'm going to give you the power. I didn't want you to continue that in that scenario there. Yeah, in this area you got that wicked awesome clue. I missed it. So we would have made the field. We would have made the field, we would have been going the wrong way though. Yeah, no, I agree with that. So my judgment of the airplane uh, height and so on and distance was good. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I think you were gonna, that was going to work out. You still had all the flaps to, to fi figure that out. It would have been a high ground speed. Yeah, that is such a good lesson though. You have to think about the wind when you plan for a forced approach. I mean, come on. Yeah, I think we could go back to the circuit now if you're comfortable. How long have we been up for? 26 minutes. Wow, that feels a lot longer than 26 minutes. Told you we're going to be done. That's awesome. Approaching landing is going to be an entirely dedicated episode, but here's a teaser of what's coming in that one. I'll be soon, eh? How's yeah. the power to fix that bounce? No, nope, we're going around. Going around. I have it. And you were going to do that all the way down the runway. They weren't all that bad, but this is definitely a challenging airplane to learn. Anyway, meantime, please do visit flightchops.com for the back catalog to join our mailing list and to see what giveaways are happening. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. I was watching the windsock thinking, geez. It was yeah. a workout, big time. Yeah. And when you're working out in the Harvard, man, you know it's ripping. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, good stuff, Aaron. Oh, thanks. All right. His got progressively worse too. Yeah, <laughs> so but you get started off with you know? the best landing and finished with the worst. You get, you get confident and then.